Yeah, we're gonna be cursing. That was my way of telling you that. Um, so, yeah, thanks for coming. We're starting the show. Thank you for the lights. Uh, uh, buy a round of applause. How many people have been to one of these before here? <laughs> buy a round of applause. How many of you have not been to one of these here before? Awesome. We love bringing in new people. Thank you for coming. I hope we're funny for you. So, I am not your host tonight. I'm just emceeing this bitch. I'm gonna bring your host up. But first, I need to tell you some rules. Uh-oh, feedback. No feedback, that's the first rule. Um, so, don't heckle. That's the main one. Don't, you know, we've got a job to do up here. We all are focused, we've prepared some stuff, and just, when you shout something out that like, I disagree, we're like, we're usually like, I don't care, but we're mostly like, I forgot what I was about to say. So, if it's funny, laugh, please do that. Like, this is, this is more of a conversation than you think. You, this is not you sitting on your ass at home watching Netflix. This is not a comedy special that way. Like, you have to do 10% of the work. We're going to do 90% of it by coming up here with prepared material and telling you jokes and trying to deliver them in the funniest way possible, but you still have to laugh when you think it's funny. You know when you're with a friend and they say something kind of funny and you go, huh. well tonight you have to go, ha ha ha! There you go, that guy gets it. Um, so yeah, no heckling, please laugh. Uh, that's all I really have for you guys. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring up your host for the night. Everybody give a big, warm welcome to Farley! What is up, everybody? What, what? I love you. Oh, thank you. Aw, that made me feel good. How's everyone doing tonight? We got a good list of people coming up. Definitely fun. I haven't hosted since like June, so I'm sorry if I fuck up. Okay, that's okay. Thank you. All right. So I figured out. Uh, I figured out that I would go ahead and do some news with you guys. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. Someone fucking answer. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So uh, recently, Kobe Bryant was in the news. Did anyone see that? No. No. Okay. After their last loss. Uh, he said that, or he was talking to some news people, and he said that he was, he feels that he's too aggressive. Which I think is really cool that you can say that after you lose a game. I mean, if that could work in reality, like other ways, like, you know, when Ray Rice got arrested. But like, he's too aggressive. Let him off. So also, uh, recently the uh, space shuttle, I don't even know how to say it, fillet, fillet, fill up or whatever, landed on the comet that it's been chasing for 10 years. It's gone over 4 billion miles. First of all, I'd like to say that's a long time to be chasing some tail. Okay? <laughs> Fucking A. And then when it landed, it fell on its side. So I would have loved to have been in the room for that. Jeff, you had one fucking job. You fucking crashed it. Not only that, it's setting in a hole. We can't see shit. Ted, the batteries died. I used Duracell. <laughs> so also this week, uh, the Vatican held a week-long conference on marriage, right? Saying how each child deserved a mother and a father. And that if they didn't, that they would end up having a lot of issues. Which I think is really cool, because I mean, we don't want our straight priests molesting little fucked up kids. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so Macaulay Culkin supposedly died. It was a hoax. But when I first saw that on Facebook, I was like, no! <laughs> you know? That, that was how I ran into it. Yeah, so everyone knows that it's uh, legal in Washington for weed, right? <laughs> Alright, so that's not fucking news. Never mind. <laughs> Shit, I'm just playing. So, no, um, seriously, the, the state of Washington made over $600,000 at a legal, professional weed auction where they sold a strain of weed called, hold that thought, I, I lost it. Okay, Girl Scout Cookies. <laughs> Seriously, whoever thought of that name is just a fucking genius. Seriously. Now in related news, the Girl Scouts of America made $1.2 billion selling cookies just outside of the auction. So, that was just genius. And uh, did everyone see that The Rock supposedly got arrested for using drugs? I don't know if that was a hoax or not, but 
honestly, a wrestler getting arrested for using drugs? Duh. I didn't think that that was kind of illegal. But whatever. Now, if you have any problems with any of the news that I get, I get it off of Facebook, so it's probably just as good as getting it off of Fox News. So, you guys ready for your first comedian? Yeah! Let's give it up for Winston Smith! Oh, oh, Ed, there we go. What's going on, people? Uh, we got any uh, couples in the building tonight? Like, where do I see any couples? One couple? You guys on a date, or is this just like hanging out type shit? Hanging out type shit? That's what I'm talking about. Because dating and going to a comedy show is the worst sad date you could ever think of. Because, uh, I mean, like, usually when, when you're dating, like, you're trying to, like, get to know a person, you know? And I feel like if you're at a comedy show, that is probably the wrong time to find out new information about them that you would not have asked otherwise during a date. Like, for example, let's say, like, you decide to go to a comedy show and you're on a date, and uh, the girl doesn't think it's very funny at all. She's not laughing, but the guy, he is laughing his ass off. He's clapping his hands and he's stomping his feet, and all the comedian is talking about is rape and abortions. <laughs> I mean, uh, I haven't actually gone on the internet and fact checked this shit, but sometimes women do not find rape to be that hilarious. As far as I know, like, being forced to have sex against your will, like, that's something that women don't enjoy. Regardless of how goofy your sweater is or how extravagant your collection of Jello pudding pops, they, they just do not enjoy it. And abortions, like oh my god, like abortions, women do not find it very humorous to joke about getting rid of something that might be living inside of them. Like I can't even imagine because I had a hard time when I was younger getting rid of my toys and. I can only imagine if I knew later on in life they would have started walking and talking and shit like that. Man, I would have freaked out when I lost those things. I would have been like, no! Come back, flashlight! <laughs> For those of you that don't know what a flashlight is, that is a medical device used to prevent carpal tunnel. <laughs> the more you know. So, uh... Yeah, rape, rape and abortion is a very controversial subject. It's nothing that you would actually bring up on a date. So, I'm not saying that if you laugh at those kind of jokes, you support that kind of behavior, but I am saying that if you laugh at those kind of jokes, I could not think of a way to make that funny. You look like a rapist when you laugh at those kind of jokes. Stop it, people. It's just fucking sick. Um... But yeah, so yeah, when I want to talk about that, like I know some guys are probably like, oh, well that's not fucking fair. I'm just trying to have a good time, man. Some people can't take a fucking joke. But uh, let's flip it around a little bit. Let's say you go to a comedy show for a date, and now the guy doesn't think it's funny, and the girl's laughing her ass off, and she's clapping her hands, and she's stomping her feet, and she's nodding her head like she can relate, like yeah. And all the comedian is talking about is just making jokes about small dicks and uh, how terrible some men are in bed. Uh, I don't know about you, but like the last place I want to be when I get the information that I might have a tiny dick and I might be very terrible in bed is in a room full of people that might be laughing at my expense. That's just me, maybe. I don't know. So uh, the, the real question, though, is where do you go on a date if you can't go to a comedy show? Uh, well, <laughs> that was, I don't know, I just got heckled by a laugh, I don't know what that confusing, what the hell, someone, thought something was funny? <laughs> yeah, so, so, so where do you actually go on a date, like, if you can't actually go to a comedy show, you know? And, uh, the problem with that is that, let's get one thing straight, for guys, like, the date is not for you at all. Guys do not give a shit about a date. Like, the expectation of a guy for his agenda of the day is pretty much fuck, eat, and drink. That's it. Those are the only necessities of the day. You don't even need to find a date for most of that shit to happen. 
Like, <laughs> all I want to do is just, I want to eat, I want to drink, I want to fuck. Hello. <laughs> Day's done. So anything that happens beyond that is just pretty much a bonus. Uh, so, like, it's a different idea for a girl because pretty much a date is more or less an audition for you. That's all it is. Like, just to see whether or not you qualify to fit the part that she wants you to play. So, the first thing that you would want to do, like for starters, is probably you want to pick a place to eat. And uh, my suggestion is just to pick a place where there's steak involved. That's very important because you don't want to pick a place that's too cheap. If the menu that you're ordering from has the word value in it, you've probably fucked up. If two-thirds of the menu start with Mick, then you might have actually fucked up. And if your meal is served to you on a tray with no utensils, you have definitely fucked up. So those are the rules for that. Like, that is definitely how you go about eating. Beyond that, the only other important thing is what you do after the date. And I don't know about you, but usually I like to go to the movies. That's a good time, because then you don't have to talk that much. <laughs> and I'm terrible at talking. So, you go to a movie, but what kind of movie do you actually go to? Do you go see a romantic comedy? Fuck no, that's a terrible idea because that gives girls ideas of what you're supposed to do in a relationship. Bullshit science fiction ideas that don't actually happen in real life. Like, going into a coma and then waking up like, Oh, I thought of you the entire time and then I woke up just to tell you I love you. They love that shit. Channing Tatum will ruin your life if you go see him in a movie. If you know that Ryan Gosling is in the poster, do not go see that fucking movie. It's a no. So if you don't want to go see that, most people want to go see a horror movie. I would say that would be a good choice because there's a lot of snuggling and like protecting going on. But I would not take a date to go see a horror movie. My main reason why is because that gives a girl the false pretense that in a dangerous situation, I might actually save her. <laughs> That's not going to happen either. I'm a runner. I'm a runner. <laughs> Every man for himself in those situations. So, I just don't, and like the other thing about horror movies is, even if like, I'm totally fine with it, let's say she jumps in the movie theater and I jump. Now I look like a bitch completely. Like, who's gonna save who at that point? It's scary. So let's say we actually do go to a horror movie. And after it's over, you know, I drop her off back at her place, because obviously she's not going home with me. That's when the actual horror starts. Because, I don't know about you guys, but even if I don't find a horror movie to be very scary, the thought of it lingers in my head for like three or four days, and like some images might come up just completely fuck with me that didn't even happen in the actual movie. And it starts as soon as I walk to my car. I'm walking to my car by myself, I'm starting to walk, and then the echo of my own footsteps just all of a sudden scared the shit out of me, like And the echo is like what the fuck is that? So now I'm mimicking myself <laughs> like an idiot in the middle of the street, like tch, 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 tch. Oh, ten minutes later, I'm sitting in the middle of the street, just tap dancing, like uh, I know you're that ghost. And that's how it starts. And that's not the end either. As soon as I get to the car, as soon as I see the car, I'm immediately like. <laughs> can't get my hand out of my pocket. I'm trying to get my keys out. Fumbling with my keys. I totally see how people die in movies now because I, I immediately panic and there's nobody there at all. I'm just by myself in the streets looking for my fucking keys in my pocket I can't find. I'm trying to unlock the door. When I finally get in the car, what's the first thing I do? I look in the back seat because for some reason I think that someone has no life whatsoever and has decided they're going to sit the entire time I'm on my date. I'm on my date to, uh, wait for me and hack me when I'm alone. I don't know why that's a thing that would happen, but it is, and it terrifies me. So then, I get back to the house, and things in my house scare the shit out of me. <laughs> it's terrifying. Have you, has anyone here ever like seen their dog bark at something that's not there, and then you get so fucking mad, like, you fucking dog, what are you barking at, you stupid son of a bitch, stop doing that! Oh my god, that shit irks me to no end. It's the worst, like, horror movies is a terrible idea because if that doesn't scare you, when you go to take a shower, that might frighten you. Has anyone, like, because that, my shower is my personal place where I like to sing. That's my personal concert. 
But it is not enjoyable when I'm like listening for door openings and floor creaks the entire time. Like, I cannot take a shower after a horror movie for three days because every single time I'm just like, what the fuck? And like, it just creeps me out to no end. I have to have like transparent curtains. And the worst part by far, which is the actual like dumbest survival rule, but I feel like everyone has at least done this at least when they were a child. Like, uh, and I still do it to this day because I am still a child. But, uh, Going to bed at night after seeing a horror movie and being terrified and thinking that you might die. The, the long struggle from the light switch to the bed is the worst because you have to come up with some kind of plan. Like, okay, <laughs> and you sit there like at the light. She's enjoying this and I'm loving it. So like, you, you get there at the light and you're sitting like, all right, I'm gonna turn this bitch off and then that's when ghosts show up. <laughs> like, clearly. When that happens, I'll run, jump into the bed, and go underneath the covers. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> and, for some reason in your head, you jump into the blanket like, SAFE! Like, if anything were in the closet, or underneath your bed, you'd be like, GOD DAMN IT, THE BLANKET'S AGAIN! I CAN'T SEE YOU, OR YOU CAN'T SEE ME, SO I CAN'T KILL YOU! Oh, what the fuck, that's an Afghan, how does that count? What? Is that a flashlight? Oh my god! That's my time, people. Thank you. Give it up for Winston! Okay, by the way, this is one of the first times this has ever happened. Did that freak you out when you laughed and it scared him? We comics, we're not used to laughter. So try to tone it down just a little bit. And as he was talking about it, do we have anyone in here that's on a date tonight? Are you guys on a date? No. He looks back and forth at each other, so I didn't know. It's like, we are, but don't tell him. He's gonna focus on us. Shit. Okay, you guys ready for your next comic? Yeah, let's keep the laughter going. Give it up for Tristan! Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Uh, I'd like to thank Winston for writing the first half of his set about my upcoming set. I appreciate that. I like the publicity there. Also, uh, I'd like to say, please remember to tip your bartender. As you can see from the glitter, she had a rough day with David Bowie today and she needs to wash out the taste of clam, so toss her a beer. So, um, I'm sure you've heard about this shit with the Redskins, right? Yeah? Anybody? No, no? Am I, like, nobody's seen TV? Is that, is that what I'm getting? Okay, I want to take that as a yes, then. Alright. No, apparently they've got to change their name because it's racist, and... Well, a lot of people have said that, uh, you know, they're going too far in making them change their name, and... Frankly, no, I don't think they went too far. Uh, I, I think they, uh, actually should go farther, um, because... As a southern white male from Dallas... Why the fuck are they still using cowboys as a mascot? Those are people, right? Or, uh, what about, you know what? I was raised pagan. What about the fucking wizards? Or, for that matter, the Celtics... Oh, Alright, the Celtics, nobody gives a shit about the Irish. I understand that. But still. Like, they're still... They're human mascots. I really think it's a double fucking standard. Either get rid of all of them, or... Or, I, I don't know, I mean... I hear there's sock puppets suing the Red Sox right now, but... So, uh, yeah, and speaking of some of the stuff from Winston's set, uh, anybody here have kids? Yeah! Yeah? Poor bastards. No, uh, I, uh, I don't have any kids, but according to my punch card, my next abortion's half off. Uh, I'm actually, uh, I'm thinking of uh, opening a midwife's clinic that's uh, based off Little Caesars. I'm calling it Little Caesarians. Pizza, pizza. <laughs> um, so, have you guys ever seen movies that have, like, sexy shower scenes? Like, there's... Yes, thank you. Thank you. Holy shit, there's one. Alright. 
you guys, you need to pay attention. All right. No, uh, I, I don't understand that. I mean, it's, it looks really good in the movies, but if, if they had a shower scene with me, it would be me huddled, it would be like a lanky guy huddled in a ball hacking up last night's pot. Like, <laughs> it's like hacking up gray shit. Like, that's not fucking sexy. Not to mention, have you ever seen what semen does in hot water? And, I mean, every guy here knows what I'm talking about, whether or not he's going to admit it. I mean, I might be telling you more than my roommate wants to know, but it, it gets this odd consistency where it's almost like a uh, rubber glue. Which is good because my tiles are falling out of the shower anyway. Kind of, kind of a problem that fixes itself, really. You know, it's making lemons out of lemonade and wanting to make lemonade all day, really. So, I really, I really only got one more thing I'd like to address, and um, it's, I don't, I don't know, you know, people seem to think that there's a real double standard between men and women nowadays, but I think that we've made a lot of improvements compared to what it was in the 50s. Uh, just like in, you know, just, just like 70 years, we've made such progress considering half of the songs that were considered love songs from our grandparents' generation basically read like a rape letter. And I am going to demonstrate that with an Elvis song by only changing like one phrase in the entire song. All the other lyrics are the original song, okay? So keep that in mind. actually do a 10 minute intermission. So any of you smokers or anything like that, try to hold out until that time. 
to step outside, so that way we're not missing anyone's sets. And that's also a good time to go ahead and get fucking drunk for the second half. You guys ready for your next comedian? Yeah? Give it up! I heard this lady, the last show, she did amazing. Give it up for Allison Blair! I was gonna say something about the fact that I was carrying up two bottles up here. I'm just, I'm not going to. It, it would have been really stupid. Um, so I apologize in advance. Um, I felt like shit absolutely all day. Just really nauseous. I don't know if I've just been hungover or pregnant. <laughs> Either way, I'm gonna feel way better after I finish this drink, so. <laughs> No, I, I haven't been slutting it up or anything lately, you know? But I mean, that's like the like ever-looming threat of being female, you know? It happened to fucking Mary, it can happen to you. <laughs> Anyways, I, I'm really unprepared tonight, so I have this cool little receipt paper that I jotted down talking points. I meant to do that when I first got up here and I distracted myself. Anyway, so I'm, a, I'm writing a book. I don't know if uh, any of you guys know this. I do writing and a lot of other stuff too. Uh, and they always say you should write what you know. Um, so I'm currently writing a like semi-autobiographical, semi-how-to manual called How to Strike Out with Men. Uh, yeah, chapter one you know, starts out with, you know, apparently guys don't like it when you initiate conversation with a hey girl. Um, I'm, I'm gonna do that anyways, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> chapter three, razor burn is sexy. Um, sorry, fuck you guys, that was funny. <laughs> no, I, uh, don't know how to do this apparently. No, I actually went out for a girls' night uh, about a month ago, which is really rare for me because I don't have friends, so... Uh, I, I go out and I, I've already struck out with this guy and I was like, I'm gonna relentlessly hit on him all night. So in the car, I'm sitting there geeking out over like really bad pickup lines, you know, like, hey girl, is your dad a baker? Cause you got some nice buns. You know, basic, you know, hey girl, are you an antiquer? Cause I got some junk that hasn't been touched in years. Uh, my personal favorite um, was, hey girl, are you an orphanage? Because I want to give you children. Uh, they're all just so bad. However, little did I know that my beautiful, unsuspecting friend Megan would be the actual target of the worst pickup line ever. It's not funny. It was just bad. Okay, so, so a guy walks up to her at the fucking bar. I'm sure you know the type. Fucking tie-dye bandana. His shirt may as well have just said, I'll give you some weed if you just touch it. Um, <laughs> He just goes up to her at the bar and goes, Hey girl, hey girl, you're, you're beautiful. You're, you're so beautiful. You're beautiful like Pearl Jam. <laughs> Which honestly, she should have just gone, What's up, Pearl Jam? And that would have like, Pfft. No, I don't like Pearl Jam. Um, which I'm sure some of you are going to be, Yeah, oh, okay, whatever. Uh, but no, I had a, I have an ex who really enjoyed Pearl Jam, and I really didn't, so I'd play this game to piss him off, where every time Pearl Jam would come on the radio in the car, I'd go, fuck Dave Matthews, and change the channel. <laughs> By the way, happy birthday, Josh. <laughs> uh, do any of you guys go to Lock-In Music Festival? No, neither do I. <laughs> but I have friends who do, and whenever they bring it up, I love to just go, Wait, sorry, Sarah McLaughlin? And, uh, they don't like that. They, they do not like that. Um, speaking, going back to the how to strike out with guys, don't fucking mess around or fall in love with guys in your own social circle. I, I fell a little in love with one of my friends not too long ago, and that just ended really badly. You know, you lose a friend and it fucking sucks. And, um, you know, I think when my first, like, oh, my heart be still moment, I was like, he had a little plushy Cthulhu on the dash of his car. It was a bright fucking yellow Monte Carlo. 
Oh my god, but you know what I mean? And now I like see bright yellow muscle cars around Charlottesville and I just go, oh, oh. And then I realized that Homeboy drove a bright yellow muscle car, so I probably dodged a bullet long run. Um, now it didn't end as badly as it could have. Um, it was a first for me in that he, uh, he, he did pick up the tab um, for the morning after pill. <laughs> so that was, that was special. Um, but no, I think after that his girlfriend said we couldn't see each other anymore. Uh, no, the friend zone sucks. No matter what side you're on, the friend zone always sucks. I, unfortunately, have friend zoned a lot of guys recently, and when I realized they have a thing for me, I'm straight up, I tell them I'm a fucking horrible human being. I'm terrible. I mean, I guess, you know, I don't come straight out and say it's not gonna happen, because then they'd stop buying me things on their EBT cards. <laughs> No, I work over at the SPCA, and uh, we do like low-income spay-neuter surgeries if you have like proof of government assistance, you know, like an EBT card. Uh, and it's like 25 bucks for a fucking surgery. Um, I didn't think we had to specify that we do not accept the EBT card as a form of payment for the surgery. And I wouldn't be saying this is if, if it hadn't actually happened, by the way. Um, no, crazy cat lady stuff. Always fun. Um, so I've been doing like online dating recently too, which, you know, I thought it would help me achieve my lifelong dream of being a trophy wife. However, I'm too loud, too chunky, and I laugh at poop jokes. So, uh, but no, I, um, there's a lot of fun stuff that happens when you're doing online dating. Yeah, I gave up on this shit. Um, that, that ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work tonight. That is a stand for me to lean on because I'm drinking. Um, but yeah, so internet dating. Um, background story for this is I'm actually one of the co-founders of a uh, local nerd convention over in Charlottesville, OmegaCon, anybody? Yeah, bitches! Okay, sorry. So I got really excited when Homeboy hits me up on okcupid.com and his username is like Omega Pride number number. You know, he sends me a message, my name's so-and-so, topical, topical, topical questions. And I just ignored it all completely. Uh, and just said, oh my god, are you inspired by Omegacon? Um, you know, because username, I got a little too excited about that. And he just responded with, no, actually, it's in reference to the film Alpha and Omega. Which, for those of you who don't know, that is a straight-to-DVD animated children's movie about anthropomorphic wolves. <laughs> So, yeah, I guess you like need to set up a fucking filter to keep the under 15 year olds off of dating sites now. Um, but now we have our fourth date on Friday and I'm really nervous. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm single, buy me drinks. Um, no, and then we've got the other side of the spectrum though as well with online dating was, this was just beautiful. This was a beautiful moment in my life. I opened up a message one day and it just says, girl, I want to get between your legs and eat the weight of your heart. And I didn't know if I should report it or, or screen cap it or fucking cross stitch it. <laughs> Crazy cat lady. Yeah, speaking of internet, I'm surprised nobody else has talked about the break the internet bullshit that went down. <laughs> yeah, and let's, let's all be honest with ourselves. If it wasn't called break the internet, people wouldn't give a shit. You know, nobody would be caring yeah. nearly as much. We've just got a bunch of self-involved Redditors at their computer going, well, actually, that's not how the internet works. And I mean, it's, it really should have been called feed the fucking internet. Um, but yeah, no, somebody asked me my opinion and I said, girl, you better pass me some Activia because I don't give a shit. Um, poop jokes. Now there's nothing quite as awkward as like waking up in the middle of the night to your own fart. Um, but, but it is worse when you're passed out at a party. So I just pretend like I'm still asleep. Uh, because everybody knows when uh, girls fart in their sleep, it's, it's not really farting, it's just their dreams escaping out their butthole. I'm sorry, that, that was absolutely terrible. That was really bad, and that's all I got. I, I had a closing remark, but I don't fucking remember, so... Thank you guys for, for putting up with this. Keep it going for Allison Blair, everybody.
Everyone still having fun after now learning that girls fart in their sleep? Yeah. That was a surprise to me too. I thought it was just me. Yeah. You guys ready for your next comedian? This guy requested to go on after her, so I'm not quite sure what that means. <laughs> but yeah, okay, give it up for Trevor Stewart! <laughs> That's still on. I like big sluts and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny that when a big old slut walks in with an itty bitty waist and a big round thing in your face, you get confused? <laughs> no, I like sluts. I really do. I like red sluts, and I like blue. I like old sluts, and I like new. And I like sluts, just like you, Tristan. I like two sluts, and I like one. I like big sluts, cause they're lots of fun. I like small sluts too. I like all sluts. Sluts like you, Tristan. I like nice sluts and I like coy sluts. I like girl sluts and I like boy sluts. I like real sluts and I like toy sluts. And I like sluts just like you, Tristan. Hey, I, I, you know, I'm well aware that I'm a slut. Well, actually, as I'll get into later, <clears throat> there are a few ways you can tell a slut, and I may be lacking on a few of those these days. But I, I do want to say that, you know, uh, as much as I like sluts, my girlfriend isn't one. That woman I was married to for 10 years isn't one. That might be why it didn't work out. Um, you know, Alice, being a trophy wife, not so easy. And yet, you do have to laugh at poop jokes. I had to laugh at 10 years of poop jokes. But you know, slutting isn't easy either. Being ready to, to give yourself away for free to every hairy dick and tomboy out there, just, it's exhausting. And Ken's laughing like he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> he, when I came out of the closet to Ken, he said, oh my god, that's gross. And then only went down on me twice more after that. <laughs> that's actually his joke. I'm stealing it because I thought it would work. <laughs> Trevor, why do you like sluts so much? Well, thank you for asking, Trevor. <clears throat> I will answer this question with another question. Do you know what the difference between a bitch... Oh my god, he said bitch. I guess we're going for a PG-13 rating this time. The difference between a bitch and a slut is... A slut will have sex with everybody at the party. A bitch will have sex with everybody at the party, except me. I figure if I become the slot, I beat the odds. Uh, now, I have come up with a few ways that you can tell if either you or somebody you may know is a slot. Uh, first off, if you've ever said the phrase, Hey, check out my dildo! you might be a slut. If you've ever worn anything that has glitter and printing on the derriere, I love that word, derriere, you might be a slut. Cutie, sexy, sperm receptacle. Not my finest hour. You might be a slut if the number you, of people you have slept with equals two times or more your age. Now, I'm kind of lacking on that one because of the aforementioned 10 years of marriage. Again, being a trophy wife, it wasn't easy. 
And again, Ken laughs like he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> you, finally, you might be a slut if you are immune to one or more STDs. And that parasite called pregnancy is not included. I went in to the technician and he said, your test came back negative. I said, what do you mean negative? He said, this is the first time I've ever seen it negative. I said, you mean not even one guy swimming around in a circle with a broken tail? Uh, it does help if you are sterile. If anyone wants to help me with my numbers, I'll be floating around here for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Thank you very much. Give it up for Trevor Stewart, everybody. Very funny guy, very funny guy. Man, it's been a fun night, right? Yeah? Gotten to learn a lot about people up here. Remind me later to take them off my Facebook. <laughs> and I would like to go ahead and throw out uh, Rosie, wherever you are. Oh, you're right there. Hi. Um, don't be offended. Tom's not a slut, but he did show me his dildo and his glitter-covered derriere. <laughs> Needless, I have to say, bravo. <laughs> Alright, so you guys ready for your next comic? Woo! Yeah! Let's give it up for Rosie!
every time and fall asleep immediately afterwards. <laughs> it's kind of awkward though, because like I'm a girl still. Like I still have like the shit. And uh... <laughs> if you fall asleep immediately afterwards when you're a girl, like you're kind of still in the middle of stuff and he's just like, are you alive? Like, you're asleep right now? Come on! I'm like, you can finish. Um, <laughs> so there's a lot of other really weird different changes that I'm not at all used to. Like, at my new job, I just found out today, like, if I'm sick, I can call, not only can I call in, that's a possibility for me now, but not only that, I might get paid for that day. That's insane for me. Like, I used to have to pay somebody else if I got sick. Like, just calling on the phone like, I'm literally dying, man. I will give you half of my paycheck <laughs> if you go to work for me for four hours. Um, so I'm gonna be calling in sick a lot now. <laughs> man, I just came, came down without Ebola. <laughs> Um, you guys have been talking about sluts a lot, and you know that makes me happy, because I'm a huge slut, like huge. I know I was talking about my husband, but that doesn't matter. I'm a slut. Buy me drinks. Actually, I've been petitioning AB to put a glory hole in the back bathroom for like six months now. Yeah. I'm like this close to bringing in a sledgehammer myself and fucking duct taping that shit. Um, for you, for those of you that don't know, the perfect, like the best glory holes have uh, duct tape around them. So, they, dude. Anyway. Um, <laughs> that made me laugh. Sorry. Um, <laughs> So, I guess now that I'm normal, normal, uh, I should be doing normal things with like my peer group. Um, and I've noticed that a lot of my friends from college have like stopped doing like the crazy party night or like doing cocaine and having that meth lab in the dorm room. Um, can't really do it anymore because they got kids. Uh, so they get boring, um, and I'm not really boring, but I'm trying to fit in because it's important to have friends. Uh, so I've started like trying to go to like I call I call them uh, mom parties because they're not like real like crazy parties. They're just like we're gonna get together and talk about our children and drink wine and cry eventually. <laughs> um, <laughs> And what I mean by that is like uh, a lot of those kinds of things are like uh, makeup parties or like Tupperware parties. Um, my favorite brand of all those parties, however, is the sex toy party. Um, and that is really where women of my age group um, let loose. Like that's the last, that's their chance of like having those memories of those cocaine driven parties. It's like, man, we're gonna go to a sex toy party tonight. It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> we're gonna see penises. Um, so I noticed though that although I wanna like participate with my friends, my friend groups, it never ever works out. Um, and that is because I'm super weird and creepy. Uh, so to like keep myself from going to these sex toy parties, I've come up with a list of eight reasons why you shouldn't invo invite me to your next sex toy party. Um, so if you guys were thinking about doing that, you won't now. <laughs> Number eight, I have a penis. True. Not funny, but true. That's like the one that I had to include just because it is important, I guess. Penises aren't really important, I don't know why I said that. Um, so, number seven is, uh, so these sex toy parties kind of operate, like they have like this like routine, I guess. In the beginning, um, 
I get like they have like a uh, meet and greet, I guess, where everybody sits in their circle and holds hands, like Indian style, and introduces them themselves and like gives a fun fact so that you can like laugh at each other or like realize that you're the same and everybody's cool. Um, and at these sex toy parties, uh, the fun one is, uh, what's your favorite sex position? Now, a lot of women, like half of the women are like, doggy style. <laughs> There's a couple of like, like out there girls that are like, I like reverse cowgirl. And they're like, oh my god, I've never heard of that. But I'm always like the weirdo that's like the squid. <laughs> They're like, what the fuck? I'm like, you never like, you know, had like that Zoidberg moment? <laughs> women like to cook, I guess. And uh, a lot of women bring hors d'oeuvres to these kind of parties. And uh, number, reason number six why you shouldn't invite me is because unlike the other women that will bring something that's like funny and like quirky, like a little double entendre, like little weenies or sticky buds, I'm, I'm going to bring a cream pie. <laughs> <laughs> number five. Again, this peer group is kind of like conventional, so they start the evening off with pro a product line that's somewhat tame, so everybody can get into it. They've only had their first glass of wine, so you know, they're feeling a little weird, a um, little uncomfortable. Uh, so they, they trot out the lotions and lube uh, product line, and there's always like a lot of, you know, like stuff that will like have like a this has a tingling sensation, or uh, this one feels like it's burning. Um, but my question is always, is this safe on pets? <laughs> Number four. <laughs> the next branch of uh, these, what they're called passion parties, is um, uh, flavor passion. And those are like like flavor sprays that you like spray on your junk to make it taste like strawberry or like cherry. You know, like something different from the usual like tilapia. <laughs> that you guys used to. And I love this, like, I love this section because I have been fucking searching, searching through the online catalogs, fucking Adam and Eve. I'm just trying to find that jism flavored spray. <laughs> you know, so my guy can, like, have the same experience I do. <laughs> uh, Okay, so at this point, women are like, oh my god, we're like using our mouths, we need to take a break. So we, we have a break, and women go and pee the like three glasses of wine that they've had through the course of the evening to like, get comfortable. And uh, inevitably, people will start talking about movies, because that's just what everybody, everybody likes movies. Um, but it's a passion party, and I love porn. I love it. I know that's weird. <laughs> I know not a lot of women are not like me, like I watch it all the time. And uh, so like I'm like, man, this is a sex toy party. We're gonna fucking talk about sex movies. Um, and the conversation always rolls around to it. And the last sex toy party that I went to, I heard a, like I heard from some other room some woman mentioned pirates. And I just like lit up. I was like, oh my god! Have you seen Sasha Gray in Pirates 2? Yes! I have. Where are the women's voices? Like, I hear some gruff, like, yeah! Sasha Gray! <laughs> no, I'm with you. I'm also that gruff man inside. 
<laughs> um, and I'm just like, oh my god, have you seen Pirates too? Have you seen it? Uh, this woman was like, oh yeah, is that like the, like, parodies? Yeah, my husband was telling me about that. I'm like, yeah, man, you gotta see it, it's awesome. And she was like, yeah, I'm like, I, I, I need to find that. I can't find it. My husband said it was really great, it was really funny, it was a really great parody. And I was like, funny is not exactly how I would describe that movie. <laughs> Whatever. She's like, yeah, maybe, you know what? I think I saw my son Tyler with it. I'm going to ask him if I can borrow it. <laughs> and I was like, we're talking about pornography, right? And she's like, no, we were talking about the notebook rosie. <laughs> I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> like, why is that the women's version of porn? It's so disappointing. Um, just makes me want to cut my soul. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel bad for that joke, I'm sorry. Um, so, number two is, uh, we, at, the, at these sex toy parties, you usually come, or you always come to the point in the evening where you reach, everybody's been waiting for it, the piece de resistance, fucking dildos, man. We get to see them. Uh, and everybody's all excited, mostly drunk, uh, and uh, we get to, I, I love this portion of the evening because this is really why I've been coming here. Uh, I mean, I, I like that we get to bond or be around other people, but like, I do a lot of my shopping online because it's really awkward to walk into a sex toy shop with a bunch of truckers looking at you. Have you none of you been in a fucking sex toy shop? Like 90% of the business is from truckers, I promise you. Um, I bet. It's not awkward for me either, I'm lying. I love it. Uh, um, uh, but it's, it is kind of weird to be feeling like the different types of silicons and el elastomers in like the view of perfect strangers. So like these, these parties are a good opportunity to see what you like without like weirdos watching you like it. Um, but this is also a really awkward situation for me because I don't wear a bra. And a lot of women are like this, but I am especially like this in the fact that uh, I have an indicator on what turns me on and not. A little nipple erection here. So why I'm trying to have small talk with these moms, I'm like, oh yeah, this one, oh, it doesn't work that one. Oh yeah, that's the one! Full blown Viagra right there! Um, so number one, number one reason why you should invite me to your next sex toy party is uh, because of the last, right before we leave, every woman comes to a sex toy party, sex toy party because they're dying to ask those weird questions about their bodies that they feel uncomfortable to ask their doctors or girlfriends or whatever, and they assume that for some reason the person selling sex toys has some knowledge of what is going on with your body. Um, they have a lot of questions like, uh, is this a, like, is this a weird smell, or is this, you know, I'm into this, is that weird? Lots of like, tell me I'm okay, normal questions. But I have questions that are like, is it normal that I smell peanut butter before he comes? <laughs> When you get donkey punched, do you see pink elephants? <laughs> and finally, uh, I understand that female ejaculation is normal, but have you ever known anybody that squirts neon green? <laughs> um, yes. Really? Oh man, me too! We're, we'll take out. We were drinking a lot of juice. Yeah, me too. Um, thank you guys so much. You've been great. Yeah. Keep it going for Rosie. Everyone having fun? Yeah. Trevor, I, I did want to say, there's a reason that you don't find it awkward when you walk into a store like that. 
because all the truckers get awkwarded out by you. There's a story that goes along with this. A couple weeks ago, Trevor invited me to go shopping with him. So we walked into the store, and I'm entranced. Like, I'm looking at all these, like, pocket pussies and all this shit, and I'm just like, wow. So I lost Trevor for a minute, and I didn't realize what he was doing until I heard him ask the cashier, but how many of these can I fit in my ass? <laughs> Look at the time, I gotta go. Wow, <laughs> shit. Alright, so right about now, we're gonna go ahead and take that ten minute intermission. Alright? So anyone that wants to smoke, go ahead and step outside and smoke. Anyone that wants to get fucked up and drunk, go for it! Alright, we'll be back in ten minutes. Applaud! Yeah! Alright everybody, find your seats! Woo! I'd like to hear that enthusiasm after coming back. Yeah! That's even better! Yes! Let's keep it going, come on, you guys. Cheers! Yeah! Enthusiasm! We love it! Paige, where's your enthusiasm, you asshole? Our people that are participating can't even fucking have enthusiasm. Yeah, we're back. Fuck, I go on in three people, shit. Well, I guess our audience kind of slim. When I said intermission, I meant that we come back. That does not mean go home, we're done. And you matter. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna bring up our next comedian, but first, we are doing improv tonight. We are doing set list, but we're gonna do it a little different. You guys are not gonna yell shit out at me right now. No, 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 we're gonna wait. And then as I bring each person up, then you guys get to yell shit at me. Yes! Yes! I love the enthusiasm. Shit. I kind of forgot to set up the stage for Ken. All right, let's give it up for our next comedian. He's your host all the time, except for tonight, because I decided to do it, what the fuck. All right, give it up for Ken Edwards. Woo! Oh, how's it going, guys? So, uh, can you guys see the device strapped to my head? You can. Okay, so what's happening right now is I am doing a science experiment on stage. What I, uh, I'm addicted to podcasts, and I listen to this podcast called Radio Lab, and they t talk about intense technical shit. Apparently, this woman who, um, who, covered, who is a journalist in London, she covers technology, she was able to go into the military base where they train snipers in uh, south of LA. She went in there, they strapped a device up to her head, and she tried a, uh, a round. They have like their own personal like video game where it reenacts like their uh, you know just intense situations with like soldiers in Iraq and stuff like that. So she tried it. She failed within three minutes. Someone came out and he was just like, "Okay, try again." And, and the next time, she was sure she turned down the diff they turned down the difficulty like they set it on ridiculously easy. And she thought only three minutes had gone by, but she killed everybody. And the person came out and she was like, so you, you obviously changed the difficulty. And she was like, no, we just turned the device on top of your head on. So, and time slowed down for her. She thought only three minutes had gone by. She looked at the wall, 20 minutes had gone by. So, this is called a uh, transcranial directional something. Yeah, it's really, uh, Impressive science. Basically, if you put electricity in the right place in your brains, uh, if you if you signal it, it will get used to learning things quicker. So the settings I have it on in the, where the certain cells in my brain are located right now. Once I activate it, I should learn a lot quicker. And from the research I've done, nobody has tried. The, people have tried this in dozens of ways. Uh, memorizing passages, learning guitar, stuff like that, but nobody's done it on stage doing stand-up. So, I, I, you can make this device by spending $20 at Sears. I, I bought one of my own, but what do you say, look, I have no material prepared tonight, but what do you guys say I turn it up and we all engage in this social scientific experiment to where we see if I get better at stand-up in the next 10 minutes. Are you guys for that? All right, there we go. I'm turning it up. I can see the dial on the top of it going up. Okay. 
So it said it took five minutes to kick in. I had it on the lowest setting for about five minutes, so it should have kicked in by now. Um, now it's on the highest setting. I don't know what's about to happen. I don't have any topics. What do you guys want to talk about? Anybody? Sex. Sex. Holy <laughs> shit. That is a broad topic. <laughs> do you know how many places I can go with that? I mean, I've never given a blowjob, but I constantly wonder what it's like. Like, I'm somewhat interrupted when I'm getting a blowjob about what it feels like to give one. Is that gay? I hope not. Anyone have another topic? <laughs> Balloons. Balloons? I've always wanted to try the thing where uh, you inhale uh, helium into your mouth and speak high, but no joke, the way your parents told you when you were a kid, if you made a funny face, it would stay that way, and you knew it wasn't true, I'm really just secretly afraid that that will happen to my voice. Politicians. Poli Dude, I did this. Tristan, you weren't here last time. I hosted the show last time, and, and okay, usually when I host the show, I start off with like topical jokes. Like they take like 10 seconds to tell, like late night stuff. Instead, every, the voting day was the day before and I was just pissed off about voting and so I just came up here and got on a soapbox and just lectured everybody about how pointless their voting process is. <laughs> so I'm not going to go with politicians this time. I will update you guys so I can feel an electrical tingling. Uh, people who have done this before, there are hundreds of YouTube videos on the internet of people who have made their own of these and, and they say after about five minutes they start to feel the metallic taste in their mouth and Starting to feel that, feeling that, and the tingling up here. Anyone have any other topics? Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. I'm always so, <laughs> I'm always so afraid when I go out on the interstate that Jurassic Park will become real. <laughs> this is a fear of mine only when I'm traveling to a place I've never been before. Like, if a T-Rex were to erupt from the side of the interstate and I had to drive off-road into the forest, suddenly. The Google Maps wouldn't know where I was and I wouldn't know where to go. You said dinosaurs, that is my fear that Google Maps cannot guide me. <laughs> Dude, let's keep it going. We're gonna set this right now, fuck it. Drugs! Drugs! What? Drugs! Oh my god, drugs? drugs? Guys, this is... I'm only doing this because I'm so tired of every other drug. I've done all the other ones. What drug do you want to hear about? LSD. All right, the truth, um, LSD, the last time I did LSD was about a month ago, and <laughs> maybe it was a little over that. Um, I went to a friend's house, I asked him if he had any because I wanted to, uh, this is the truth, I wanted to experience the Lazy Boy River at King's Dominion on LSD for hours on end. I made that plan for a Thursday, because Thursday is my day off to spend hours in the Lazy River. Turns out that morning I found out Kings Dominion is only open Friday through Sunday now. Isn't that sad? <laughs> but anyway, LSD, dude. So, so once I, I looked at that, I was like, fuck. Well, that means I can't go to Kings Dominion until they open next year and they're open every day again, right? So I might as well take this LSD. I'll just sit in my house on my day off and trip. So what did I do? Did any of you see the movie Prometheus? If you didn't, I'm going to tell you, Prometheus is about exploring other planets to find the people who created us. So, uh, LSD, the last time I did it, I met everybody who created us. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> they are aliens, and they birth aliens, and it is scary as fuck. Um, any other topics or drugs you want to hear about? <laughs> EMT! What's that? EMT! Ancient Egypt. Are you guys afraid somebody's gonna just come out and say that like, uh, oh, we found the building plans for the pyramid? Like, that is our last mystery. Like, how did they get here? Oh, somebody just opened a drawer in a museum that had never been opened before. <laughs> here, the, the emperor planned this, the slaves built it, there are no aliens, life is sad. <laughs> there is no mystery anymore. What else? Dogs. I have a dog, uh, we have, I'm sure the woman who screamed, that must be my wife. I can't see you because I'm blinded by these. But uh, we have a little dog named Suki, and she's so afraid of everybody. Like, she's like this big, first of all. She's full grown. 
She's not a puppy, she's this big, and she is so afraid of everybody. Like, no matter how friendly you are to her, look, this isn't funny. This is just me talking about my dog. <laughs> like, the only thing I have to say that's amusing is I think it is so endearing how every time I take her out and she has to shit, she gets halfway through the shit before she turns around and realizes I'm watching her do it. And then we just lock eyes, and it's, it's an awkward moment with a non-human individual. It's pretty weird. Uh, and, and like I said, in that original podcast where I heard about this thing, the woman, time slowed down for her. Her three minutes she thought was 20 minutes. I have no idea how long I've been up here. Are you guys sick of me yet? Do you have any other topics? Batman! What? Batman! Oh my god, do you, you don't want me to go into Batman. Yes. So Batman, <laughs> all I'm hoping is that Ben Affleck doesn't talk like this. It's a weird thing. It's a weird thing that, like, as time goes on, we accept certain things. In 1989, there could not have been a more badass version of Tim Burton's Batman. The Dark Knight comes out, we go watch Tim Burton's Batman, and we just laugh at Jack Nicholson. Suddenly, Jack Nicholson is not a real actor. <laughs> All because time moved on. Isn't that sad? Um, anything else? Farley, you, you need me to come back? You need me to leave yet? Oh, dude, I'll do this all night. I'll just take questions. I feel like a, uh, a... Anal bees. Look, I've never tried them. I've never tried them on myself. You guys are screaming, don't lie! I'm fucking hooked up to a drug! I cannot lie! Everything that is coming through me right now is not my choice! <laughs> The audience is all making the same joke, which I hope to all of you, shows all of you that that's what she said is not a funny joke anymore. Uh, uh, what did you just bring up? Anal beats. I've never tried them. All I, all I can imagine is the uh, intensity of the sexual moment being ruined by a suction cup noise. That's how I imagined anal beats. Uh, what else you got? God. Oh my God. I, dude, it's so sick how much I think about God. Like, I think about God all the time. I'm like, I read fictional stories that are obviously inspired by the Bible, and even though I don't believe in them, I'm turned on. Like, I'm like, man, this guy just has only pure thoughts. Maybe by the end of this, he's going to destroy somebody. <laughs> Uh, like, yeah, but God, God is like my, my in mood. If you tell me there's a movie coming out about a priest who fucks some kids, for some reason, I'm just, I'm there! That guy has a connection to God! I want to see how God fucks kids! And with that, I'd let you know that, Winston, you were wrong. I can make people laugh at rape. Thank you, I'm Ken Edwards. Keep it going for Ken! And his cool social experiment. Yeah! Keep it going, keep it going. Yeah. Woo! Woo. Uh. Is everybody having fun? Woo. Still? Still laughing? Having a good time? Yes. Okay, I was gonna ask a question, but that just fucked that up. How many of you guys are drunk? I know she is. That's it? She's the only drunk person here? AB, sorry, you're not making any money tonight. Fuck, we screwed that all up. You guys want your next meeting up here? Yeah? It's not you, so shut up. Alright, everyone put your hands together. Separate them, put them back together. Separate them, put them back together. In a fast motion, give it up for Tom Wagner! Hello. I just noticed that it was written right here, step with two arrows, I don't know. Two arrows? Do you need me to tell me that it's a step down? I mean, I'd figure it out or I'd fall. Either way, I'm getting down. Um, this has been a lot of fun. We'll fix that though. I'm here now, bitches. Fun stops now. Now we're gonna get serious because it's November. And it's that time of year when all those motherfuckers are gonna start wishing me a happy holiday. 
sucks. I had someone uh, about about a month ago, like a week before Halloween, uh, someone said to me, you, enjoy your holiday that's coming up. Can you not say Happy Halloween anymore? Is that anti-religious? Would be weird considering it's a pagan holiday anyway. Whatever. Holidays suck. So get ready. Right? People are going to start wishing you a happy Thanksgiving. Be happy. Enjoy it. Be thankful for the time you get to spend with the people that you cannot fucking stand. So you can have to explain all your life failures to them. Well, yeah, I still delivered pizza. Same job I had last year. No, I haven't gotten any better at life. At all. At all. I still suck at it. And don't send me pictures of your kids because I don't fucking care. We're gonna do a Christmas card this year just of our cat taking a shit in the litter box. Because that's pretty much our life. I mean, it's the highlight of my day. Um, so me and my wife, we always like to surprise each other with gifts. Um, on all kinds of holidays, birthdays, anniversaries, Christmas especially. I mean, we always have like, oh, we need a new coffee pot for the house. We'll just call it a gift to ourselves. Yeah, that's fine. But there's there's always that one special surprise gift, like, oh, you bought me new shoes. And she's like, yeah, I did. <laughs> Thanks. But there's always this, we always like to surprise each other with one gift that the other didn't know about. Like, for example, on our anniversary, I surprised my wife with a morning after pill. She was, she was pretty surprised. As payback, she surprised me for my birthday with a vasectomy. <laughs> Not expecting that at all. I mean, it's weird when your wife's like, yeah, just, just eat, eat that sandwich. No, no, I'm not gonna eat. And then you fall asleep, wake up in a doctor's office with a bag of ice on your nuts. That's awkward. I've woken up with things on my nuts before. Never in a doctor's office. What the fuck did you do to me? We fixed you. It wasn't broken. It worked. What are you talking about fixing it? I didn't get it. I didn't. I lied. I don't want to. I'm scared of it. Think about it. You're going to lay down, spread your legs, and a grown man is going to get between your legs with a knife and ask you about your family. He's going to want to talk to you. Like, it's weird when you go to the dentist and he wants to talk to you. Like, so, how are you enjoying this weather? And you're like, oh, 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 all right. Really? Yeah, that's I know. It has been quite warm out. Like, how the fuck do they interpret? I don't know. They, 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 I, don't, I don't understand how they know what you're saying. Like, you have to go to language school to be a dentist. But when that guy's down there with a knife, I'd be like, dude, concentrate. Uh, I don't want to talk to you. Concentrate. Focus. We'll go out for drinks after. Don't fuck this up. You can fix it, right? You're a doctor. Just gonna fuck it up. Uh, turned 40 recently, guys. <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. Woo. Fuck you. People are always like, yo man, 40's not that old, 40's like the new 30. And I'm like, no fucker, because I know math. 40 is 40. <laughs> I know that they haven't changed math that much. 40's still 40 and it still sucks. Where'd our, our, our my, my little buddy here, Paige, disappear? Probably because he's worried I was going to talk about him. Because he just turned 18 like a month ago. And he does comedy. And I just want to say, fuck you, Paige, wherever you are. Because you're 18. You haven't lived long enough to be cynical. The system hasn't fucked you enough. Oh, but it will. Oh, but it will. It will. Turning 18, he can vote now. He told me he voted. I don't know why. I don't know why he voted. He told me because I asked him, but I don't know why he voted. I've never voted in my life. Ever. I don't see the point in it. People don't like that. They're like, 
you care about your country? No. <laughs> not, not really. It's not really mine. I'm just kind of here. I almost burped into the microphone. That would have been real gross for whoever's name. <laughs> Sorry, Paige. I burped into the microphone. Um, <laughs> people were talking about women farting in their sleep earlier. See, bitch, it wasn't always me. Stop blaming me for that. It wasn't me. And this bullshit like, who's the cat? No. I've smelled his farts. They don't smell that bad. What did you eat? That's fucked up. Dude, turning 40 is like, it, it's weird because I'm a, I'm a quadrogenarian now, like I'm in a whole new age. Where are my fellow quadrogenarians at? Like, we have our own thing, it's 40 and up. They're called quadrogenarians, fuckers. Don't you ever look at the internet? It's weird being in a whole new age bracket. Being 40, shit's changing. You have to go to the doctor. Shit's not always where it used to be. Where the fuck did I grow hair there? Are you sure? What are you talking about? I'm not like growing extra parts on my body. I don't understand this. Can't hear so well, can't see so well, can't remember shit. Oh. Um, no, I really did forget. <laughs> it wasn't a joke. <laughs> Fuck. I told you I was 40. What part did you, did you not get about that? I'm gonna drink some water, because that's what 40 year old people do. Hydrate, motherfucker. Hydrate. You're supposed to drink eight glasses of water a day. That would suck, dude. I would piss so much. Yeah. Being 40, like, it's it's weird, like, you know how when you're a kid, your parents, like, used to measure how you were, your growth chart on the wall, they'd be like, oh, look, you're a little bit taller this year, and they'd write your little birth date next to it, mark how tall you are as you grow up the wall, I thought, that was pretty cool, I, I started doing that again when I turned 40, except not on the wall, I started doing it on inside my leg, how far my ball sang down. <laughs> And let me tell you, I'm a couple years away from not being allowed to go outside in the shorts. It's fucking scary. You'll see. All you young fuckers are like, this thing happened to me. Yeah, well. You learn something called science and gravity. It'll get you. It's gonna get all of you. And I just laugh at it. I'm like, <laughs> enjoy having, you know, no gray hairs and your nice, soft, smooth, wrinkle-free skin. Enjoy it, because it won't last. Enjoy having your taut, tight little balls right up next to your dick where you can just grab them all in one hand. That'll change. That shit'll change. You have to start jerking off with two hands. Cut your balls, but not because it feels good, just because they're banging against your leg. It's weird. Way. It's weird, did you sit on them? Like, I'm cautiously sitting on the edge of the stool, but have you ever sat on your balls? Oh my god. Don't try it at home, really. Don't be like, I wonder if that really does hurt. Oh! Oh, that is the worst feeling ever. My wife's always like, yeah, try giving birth. I've sat on my balls before. <laughs> Try giving birth, motherfucker. Didn't talk to me about pain. Well, if I had that much drugs in me, I'd sit on my balls all day. <laughs> kidding me? It's awesome. Not feel anything from the waist down? Shit. That must be crazy to not feel anything. Like, I've done drugs before, a little bit, nothing real crazy. My name's not Ken, so I haven't done them all. I've done a few. But not being able to feel anything from the waist down, it's gotta be weird. Like, I was there when my wife gave birth. I saw the whole fucking thing. I had a front row, well, not a front row seat, 
but the doctor had the front row seat. I was like in the balcony watching from the, from, I was on the right leg. That was my job, hold the right leg. Like, doc, I can hold them both up. Well, how do you think she got pregnant? So, I can do it. Just one, really? I, mean, I guess she'll like that. But it's cool because there was a nurse holding up the other leg, so I was like, this is almost a threesome. But there's a doctor there. And it was really weird when I looked down, like, I looked, I, I looked down and I saw it happen. Like, I saw the baby just come out. Shit. Hope he's okay. And then of course the doctor always has to do the maintenance work after, to fix it, put it and you know, put it back together. And it's weird if you've if you've ever seen a doctor do this, and it was weird for me because it was my wife that he was doing it. If I had seen the video on YouTube, I'd have laughed my ass off. But when the doctor's sitting there stitching up the vagina and he does one of these moves. Motherfucker, what are you doing? You're a little too close to my wife's vagina and have your tongue out. And she just gave birth. That's gross. It's pretty gross. Unless you're into that. And she might be, because you're a doctor. You're a vagina doctor. But all he does is see vaginas all day. It's gotta get boring. How do you have sex with your wife? Like, baby, come on. Um, I think you're having a, I think you're having a, Someone's having a break out there. You need to put some topical lotion on that. I just want you to fuck me. Like, I've seen vaginas all day. <sighs> Baby, is my vagina pretty? Oh my god. Compared to the other 200 I saw today, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I just don't think you're really into me. But he must be good. Like, he must know the spot. Like, right away, he's just like, come here. Like that, didn't you? Yeah. Eight years of medical school later? Yeah, magic. It's magic. I'm just making shit up. I don't know, this is fun. You guys are laughing, so I'm gonna continue making shit up. Um, do I need to leave? Do you mean to do you mean to tell do you mean do you mean to tell uh, you guys like dick jokes? Do you mean to tell a dick joke? I have a classic dick joke that I've told on the stage once before and I got a pretty decent review. So if you guys want to hear a dick joke, I would tell it to you. Can someone yell please tell me a dick joke? Can wow. I heard a lot of female voices in that. I wonder what else I can get you bitches to say. Please tell me a dick joke. Please tell me. That was not the female voice I wanted to hear. There's female voices. So, well, before before I tell a dick joke, let me ask a question. How many people here know for a fact they're getting fucked tonight? <laughs> Damn. I am really... Alright, listen. I'm not allowed... None of you clapped. Which is a sad, sad thing. Shredder, you get fucked every night. I, I'm sorry that you guys didn't, don't know you're getting fucked tonight. But I'll be over here after the show. If you want to talk, we'll fix that. I'm not picky. I'm married. It's available. Um, I don't have to remember my dick joke. Holy fuck, it's been so long since I told a dick joke. You're a guy who doesn't tell jokes about his dick, really? Call yourself a comic? Could have made you. Um, I really did forget my dick joke. I'm so terrible at this comedy thing. Um, yeah, I don't even remember how it goes. That's bad. Does anyone know how it starts? Do you know how it starts, Ken? Can you tell me? The dick joke? I have like 40 things. Ooh. I already did a joke about my dick being 40. My dick is four, my dick is 40 years old. God damn. It's bad enough when I was 40, but 
I'm sorry, buddy. You're getting old. You're getting old. It's drooping. It's hanging down. It doesn't wake me up in the morning anymore. It used to. He used to wake me up every morning. He's just like, get up. Anymore. I have to wake him up. Like, fucker? Come on! Baby, can you like touch yourself or something? I don't know. Something help me? Wait, let me look at the internet. I'll help. <laughs> so yeah. Um I really like you guys. Because you're laughing at me talking about my dick problems. <laughs> There you are. You, you cute, peach fuzzy little 18 year old. I see you. You ran off when I got on stage. He's gonna talk about me. Fuck. I already talked about you. I'm not talking about you anymore. Unless you want me to. Um, I miss, it was funny because I mentioned pulling out my phone and looking at porn and Paige comes walking around the corner. He's like, well, what, what? Oh, are we talking about porn again? I know a thing or two about that. I am 18 after all. Um, so, here's the question that I remember. <laughs> because I look at Farley, and he makes me remember this, but he was my, my light, my inspiration. Guys, help me out and tell me how many of you have ever wondered how big your best friend's dick is? What? One guy? There's some lying motherfuckers in here tonight. Some lying, but you, you want to see it. You do. Everyone, like, we're guys, we talk about our dick. That's 80% of what we talk about. The other 20% is what we want to put our dick into. That's all we do. You always have that friend that's like, you know, I hear that German people tend to have smaller dicks than other people. And there's always that one guy in the group that's like, I'm German. It's true. I'm not proud of it. I got a little dick. Whatever. And that's when you're like, can I see it? Like, Dude, I'm not going to tell anybody. There's no one else here. Come on, man. Please. Show you mine, it's fine. Please, dude, I just, I need to know. I just need to know, because I need to know. Please let me see your dick. <laughs> dude, I'm on my knees begging you, please. Please let me see your dick. Which wouldn't be that bad, unless someone else walks in the room. So you're on your knees begging to see a dick. And it just gets awkward from there. There's no real easy way to talk yourself out of this situation. You might end up stuck in a dick or two. It's a dangerous situation. But you want to see it, you would be like, dude, I just need to know. I need to rank myself among my friends. I just need to know how many of my friends I have a bigger dick than. It's an alpha male thing. It's a silverback complex. You just want to know. My dick's bigger than his. Yeah. I'm more man than he is. Or something. Not genetics or anything. It's just manliness. So I have a bigger dick than he does. But you just want to see it. You want to know. You just want to know. And I'm apparently the only one who wants to know. So I guess that makes me weird. But not really, because I've already seen my best friend's dick. So fuck you guys. You ever get in this situation where you're like, you're about to have sex with a girl and you're taking your pants off and she just kind of looks at you like... What? The, I didn't fart. What, what's wrong? Oh, my, my dick. What's wrong with my dick? 
No, 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 nothing, nothing. It's, no, it's fine, really, it's, it's cute. <laughs> Please kill me now. Don't, ever, it's cute? Really? Cute. No. Intimidating. Mesmerizing. Magical. Those are words you use to describe a dick. Not cute. Cute is for bunnies and puppies. It's not for dicks. Don't use it. It's an insult. If you ask me how, I, how what I think your vagina is, is it cool if I'm like, yeah, it's roomy, nice, whatever. It's an insult. It fucking hurts. It hurts when you say my dick is cute. Majestic. Say it's majestic. Don't say it's cute. But guys lie. I mean, that's what, <laughs> that's what they do. There's a reason they spend 80% of their time thinking about their dicks. Lying about them. Just, guys, just be honest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave with this thought, okay? Just be honest about your dick. That's all women want. Just be honest, okay? If she looks at you and she says, but I thought it, you said it was like nine inches. You look at that bitch and say, you didn't ask me where I start measuring from. <laughs> Thank you guys. Goodbye. <laughs> Give it up for Tom Wagner, everybody. Now Tom, before you go anywhere, I want to point out, I've been doing comedy for around about like five years. And it is great that I inspired that joke. <laughs> Fuck you. You're welcome. Get off stage. Fucking dick. Give it up for Tom. I kind of hoped a few months ago when he told that joke that that was never going to come back. Fuck my life. Damn it. So Tom was talking about, you know, all the holidays coming up, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up, right? Turkey Day. What? No. So it's really cool that that's a whole holiday dedicated for you to spend all day thinking about everything that you're grateful that you have. And then the next morning you get up at 4 o'clock and run over a 7-year-old going into Walmart. That's awesome. Yeah. You guys want to hear your next comic? Yeah? All of us that do the comedy up here, we fucking hate him. Because he's 18 and he's funnier than all of us put together. But give it up for Paige Campbell! <laughs> Do you remember that I told you that at the beginning of the show? Yeah. Way to pay attention, asshole. I'll whip my dick out. Turn it on, right? Oh. I'll do that at the end of the show. Turn it off. Um, so Americans are shitty, right? Yeah. Uh, it's true. They are. Um, but here's my, here's my reason, that's not the joke. Here's my reason, right? So Ebola is breaking out in America right now, which is, you know, a thing that's happening. And before Ebola came to America, no one knew what it was, literally. It, people didn't care that uh, Africans were dying every day of Ebola, no one cared. The Red Cross was like, we should probably help them, and everyone else was like, no. No, what's Ebola? And I'm not, I'm not preaching to you guys, I thought Ebola was like Marvel's new superhero. I didn't, I didn't know what Ebola was either. But then Ebola came to America, and everyone like pretended they cared. Everyone like pretended they cared, right? They were like, "Oh yeah, we should help these people. Definitely, yeah. They came here for the vaccine. We should figure out a vaccine." But then an American got Ebola, and that's where people turned off. They were like, "Deport all of these people right now! You know, we we don't want to risk it. Get all of them out. We don't want Ebola. Actually, you know what? We don't want to risk it. All black people, get all the black people out. We don't want to risk it. We liked you guys when you did stuff for us." But we don't want you here. What's, what's that? You want the watermelon? Yeah, you can have the watermelon. We just don't, don't stay here, okay? Uh, speaking of racism, <laughs> uh, there, there have to be racist vampires out there, you know? Because if you're a racist and you get bit by another vampire and become a vampire, you're not gonna stop being racist. But you have to drink blood to like live as a vampire, so like, how far does the racism go? Would you not drink certain bloods? It's like, Oh, I don't drink Asian blood. That tastes like MSG. Disgusting. <laughs> I don't drink Indian blood. That tastes, tastes like curry. Sick. Or it's like, they like, hey dude, uh, you know, Count, you want to go to like the party? All the vampires are going to be there. All of them. <sighs> Is Count Chocula going to be there? It's like, yeah, I think, he, I said all the vampires. 
I'm not going to a party that Count Chocula is going to be at. I think uh, queefs are gross, you know, queefing. So when a woman farts out of her vagina. Um, but I have a question about queefs. You know how, like, dudes will, like, light their farts sometimes when they're being dumb? Do, do women ever light their queefs? Is that, is that a thing? Like, maybe that's, you know, maybe Moses from the Bible, maybe that's what he saw. He just saw a chick, like, lighting her queef, because burning bush, right? <laughs> I like scratch and sniff stickers. I think those are cool. Um, but what's what's uh, the thing about scratch and sniff stickers? They're the only thing that's appropriate to scratch and then sniff, right? Like if you just go up to someone and scratch them and then sniff your finger. It's not gonna work. Just like in public, just like scratch your butt and then sniff it. Like it's not gonna work. Um, so people people sometimes think I'm gay, right? <laughs> And uh, I thought of a great comeback whenever someone's like, oh, Paige, you're gay. I thought of a great comeback. You know, I am gay. I'm happy, right? Happy because I suck so much dick. <laughs> I, I will. I'll blow it, dude. I will. Honestly. <laughs> you know, it's just a tender moment between friends. But I'm not, I would never fuck a dude in the ass. I'm not a faggot. <laughs> uh, people always say, follow your dreams, right? That's a thing that people say. But you never hear anyone say, follow your wet dreams. <laughs> like this. It's not a thing. I've got one more, I've got one more joke tonight. Oh, well, Thanksgiving's coming up, right? So I, I have a Thanksgiving joke. You guys want to hear my Thanksgiving joke? I, uh, I think Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, is probably the worst day for a drug dealer. Because there's so much cold turkey. <laughs> Give it up for Paige Campbell, everybody. Oh, man. What a fucking dick. Jesus. <sighs> Five years, and this is as far as I've made it. You were an asshole. <sighs> Everyone having fun? Yeah? Well, that's it for the comics. That's all I got. Because we had a couple people decide not to show up. Bitches. I did! <laughs> I meant comics, not audience. <laughs> Somebody get her another beer. She needs to be more drunk. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get all of our comics to come up here and line up right next to the stage. And we're going to do Setlist. Which, if any of you don't know, is an improv game where you guys will shout out a phrase to me. And then they will take it as a joke. So you're going to give me like a, a theme, like a person, place, and thing kind of thing. Got it? Got the rules? Good. Awesome. Alright, so first up we're going to have Winston Smith. You're fucking kidding me if one of the comedians left. Who just said that? He could be pooping. Winston, are you taking a shit? <laughs> That's a negative. Alright, so let's skip him. Who the fuck went next? Tristan! Ah, fuck. Yeah, fuck. All right, we can applaud. Come on, we're still doing this, people. All right, so somebody yell out something he can go with. Incest. All right, your th incest. I'm really tired of talking about your family, Galen. I mean, you, you, you actually got circumcised when I kicked your sister in the chin. Uh, speaking of incest, actually, uh, this, this, this is like actually more of like a. Twilight Zone, Doctor Who kind of scenario, but all right. If if Michael Jackson stole a TARDIS and went back in time and molested himself when he was in the Jackson Five, would that be incest or masturbation or child molestation? Think about it. No, I don't know. I'm 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 voting I'm voting masturbation, but that's just me. Uh, speaking of incest, it's great to be in Waynesboro. It's good to see you guys. Uh, th thank you for, for having me from, uh, from Charlottesville, which is basically uh, Dick Cheney in a Thomas Jefferson wig. And the place is pretty much, it's pretty much just like, yeah, you know, we're, we're conservative, but look how liberal we are when we pretend to be. I don't know. It's a uh, it's it's a it's a weird fucking place. Um, but don't worry, there's incest there too. Uh, all right, that's all I got. Okay, now stand up back here. 
Back up. Back on stage. Meow. All right, so next up we have Allison Blair. Yeah. By the way, real quick before you say anything, Ken, you checked the bathroom. Was he in there? Okay. Damn, we lost him. All right, so someone go ahead and yell something out for Allison. Woo! Allison! Okay, so how about you go with woo? Does that work? No. Okay, seriously, yell out something good. Wait, no, I've, I've got something for who? Okay, go for who. We'll go woo. with who. No, I once, uh, I, I, I remember, I used to live in a place called Rockstar House because we were all really, really drunk all the time. That went really well. But no, I had a good buddy, a good buddy we lived with named Howard, who I was doing laundry one night. And he comes down and he's looking all mopey and we're like, you know, Howard, what's wrong? He's like, well, you know, that girl Gabby never, uh, never got back to me. And I'm like, oh yeah, what happened? He's like, well, ever since I, uh, ever since I poked her in the tummy, she's kind of stopped calling. I was like, uh, you want to elaborate on that, buddy? And he's like, well, you know, she just, woo -woo. <laughs> I was like, okay, why did you feel the need? And he was like, I mean, she was getting a little chubby. So, yeah, my roommates were awesome. Uh, that was a great place. The basement was just all glitter and black lights and flooding. <laughs> yeah, we did not get a deposit back on that place. By the way, happy birthday, Josh. Uh, do I need to talk more about woo? Okay. All right, give it up for Allison, everybody. I didn't think you could actually go anywhere with woo, but you, you did. That was pretty good. Yeah. Once again, asshole, just show up here last week and kill it. <coughs> All right, so let's give it up for Trevor. Woo! You know why tits. they call it a woo? No, why do they call it a woo? Because he ain't a woo! <laughs> okay, let's give Trevor one. Come on, guys. Blow jobs! <laughs> oh, what do you want me to say about them? It's uh, the world's oldest profession. I've made lots of money. Yeah, you have. I only have a little bit of TMJ. And the captain in the back of the room's made even more money off of me. There's a corner in Richmond where he likes to send us. You guys do want me to keep going about blowjobs? I mean, it's kind of like blowing a smoke ring only backwards. Just remember, use the tip of the tongue too. You have the whole thing. Okay, the next time I can volunteer the host, I'm not doing it. I give up. All right, Trevor, step back. <laughs> give it up for Trevor, everybody. All right, now put your hands together for Rosie. Woo! Shut up. Only one to take the mic off. I'm gonna say that every time. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Stop your laughter. Anyway, sorry. I've been drinking. Let's <laughs> can I just say that we look like we're gonna get shot? <laughs> All right, light it up! If you start seeing the laser dot, don't get worried. <laughs> don't get worried. Or Except for you, Trevor. Um, Wait, how many of us are <laughs> We don't have an oven. Uh, okay, anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah! I took a second to kick in. These guys got it. Oh. Give me my damn topic. All right, topic! Come on! Topic. Medical malpractice. I don't know how the fuck I heard that out of everything else, but that was what I picked out. Damn you, Vincent. I'm the host. So we get. Okay, so Tom earlier was talking about his wife, like he's married, yeah. giving birth and watching uh, him or her. By the way, doctors can be women, too. Oh, wow. I mean, I'm just saying. Not that I could ever do it, because I'm too emotional. Um, <laughs> how uh, he watched his wife get sewed up after giving birth. Uh, and I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but there's this thing called um, the husband stitch. Has anybody heard of it? Yeah. Have you heard of that? 
Uh, the husband stitches. Um, you haven't heard of that? You had a child? I'm ashamed of you. Uh, I'm sorry. The husband stitch is basically back in the 50s when men didn't know anything about women's vaginas. Um, they doctors would uh, sew up a woman's vagina and then sew it up extra tight so that her husband would be able to feel something after she gave birth. You know, that makes sense, right? It's not like it's going to hurt or anything. She doesn't feel anything down there anyway. He didn't, she didn't react when you were putting it in there. She's not going to react when you rip it open with your dick. This is a horrible joke. So anyway, uh, I always said that if I got the husband stitch, it would probably be in the reverse for me. I'd get the husband gap. And it would be like a cavern, like the fucking grand like, canyon down there. Because they wouldn't know how, like, well, it was that big before. Like, it just barely, like, she, she has, like, a paper cut. What do we do with it? Oh, it's horrible. I'm sorry I gave you that topic. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can think about! That's malpractice, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll get shot now. <laughs> yeah, you need the mic back. Thank Bye. you. Bye, <laughs> Such a woman. <laughs> oh, you. All right, give it up for Rosie, everybody. Yeah. All right, now give it up for Ken Edwards. Make of that what you will. That was a smoke entrance. What? That just happened. All right. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's go ahead and give Ken a topic. Okay, drugs. We already did drugs with him. <laughs> I'm not going through that again. I've done a lot of drugs. Giraffes. <laughs> Giraffes. <laughs> Giraffes. Giraffes. So I went to Magic Kingdom this year, and the craziest part was um, in Animal Kingdom. A fucking they have a fucking open plane. Like, giraffes, elephants, anything that can live uh, harmoniously by, by, with themselves will live together in Magic Kingdom because it's fucking magic. And uh, the giraffes, as soon as we entered, the most magical thing I've ever seen, a giraffe ran across the plane, and I was like, oh my god. And then the giraffe ran back and stood right where our path was. So... All that morning, the other trams were waiting for that giraffe to move. I was so amazed when we pulled onto the plane, that fucking African plane in Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, where uh, it says, where it's just like animals, fucking giraffes, fucking elephants, fucking every fucking mammal you can imagine that isn't gonna kill another mammal, were right there. You would not believe how bored you get after 10 minutes of waiting for a giraffe to move. <laughs> that giraffe just fucking stood there. It didn't even look at us. It was as if it did not know we were there. We were... Our, our host, our fucking Disney mouse-eared <laughs> fucking guide, who was making all of it seem so magical, was getting irritated. Was having to take off the... the the microphone mic that, that let her talk to all the other tram workers, and she picked up a mic that was just like, yeah, this giraffe just won't fucking move. I don't know how we're gonna get through the morning. <laughs> and why do giraffes have horns? I was there for five minutes. First amazed that there was a giraffe right there, but second of all, after that long, you're like, that thing has fucking horns. And it's tall. What if it just decides it wants to kill me? Look, I'll just be clear. I ate a pot cookie before I went to Animal Kingdom. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Give it up for Ken Edwards, everybody. I had no idea where that was going to go. And it ended with drugs. Well, all right, let's go ahead and give it up for Tom Wagoner. 
Let's keep the applaud going, people. More people? That's good. There we go. All right. All right. Let's get a topic for Tom. Come on. Pickle juice. Pickle juice. I have no idea. Just go with it. What? I don't know. I got nothing. Pickle juice. The last one was fucking giraffes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, giraffes make sense. But pickle juice. Wait. Hooker juice. Okay, changing it to hooker juice. Now we're talking penicillin shots and trips to the clinic and all kinds of shit. Yeah, that should have came up in the malpractice part. Like, I got this. I had to go to see the doctor. I'm like, I don't, I don't. Just this leakage issue, and I'm not sure what it is and you know when you think you have an STD you have to get swabbed and I have a, a female uh, doctor so that was fun <laughs> except she's like in her 50s so it really wasn't fun and apparently I had contracted poker juice I don't know I don't know what hooker juice is but the fact that the fact that Drew Cook yelled it out that just means something. does not surprise me at all. But is it a drink? A roofy colada. Do you do hooker strength it? I have obviously not been spending enough time in bars or with hookers. <laughs> Married life, right? <laughs> a what? A pickle? What's a... Sorry, I'm hijacking the show here. A what? A pickle? A... What's a pickle back? No. I don't know why I felt I needed to get down there, but... I've had a pickle off before. Like I take it off the burger because I don't like pickles. But that's as far as I go. Sorry. Uh, okay. It's always good when there's someone talking in the background and you guys are out there going, "What the fuck did you just say?" What are they talking about? They're, la they're laughing at you. <laughs> this is the part where we laugh at you. Uh -huh. I just figured out why all my bits end in oral sex and why all Ken's bits end in drugs. <laughs> Cliffhanger! Tune in next week! Oh, <laughs> yeah, this is how we're gonna attract you guys to the next show. We're gonna leave you with cliffhangers and then in two weeks we'll fucking forget it because we're all high and shit. Just walked away. Yeah, he gave up. I had a <laughs> Give it up for Tom, everybody! All right, let's Mark. always just bring Paige up and everyone will forget everything for That's right. I mean, pretty much. You can't have a stage full of comics and a live mic. I know, right? You need to learn how to do this because you're never going to leave. I got it. You never have a, a mic without me pushing everyone out. There you go. That's ah! it. This is what happens. All right, so let's bring it up for our last comic, Paige Campbell. It looks like they're both about to give somebody a hand job. Uh, Teamwork. All right, let's give Paige a topic. What? I got arson grease the movie, and I didn't even hear yours. I'm sorry. What? You do realize he's 18, right? Well, fuck it, he's 18. Getting drunk. Honestly, I've never been drunk. Honestly. Okay, he's fucking 18. Ex except for that one time when I was like four. I think my uncle was there. Uh, I, I really just woke up with like, like pants around my ankles, pretty sore. That's the only time I've been drunk, to my knowledge. I, I was gonna suggest growing pubic hair, but you probably haven't done that yet either. That's just. Uh, so this just became a topic about puberty. Incest and getting drunk. Fuck it. All right, so that's all we got tonight, guys. Thank you so much for coming out. Give it up for all of our comedians. Give it up.
give it up for your awesome one-time host. Uh, what a and obviously, give it up for AB for hosting this shit. Give it up for the bartender. Give it up for yourselves for being awesome. Yeah. Brave people in winter to come see us try to be funny. Yeah. Hey, just so you guys know, on New Year's Eve there will be a show of comics before a before DJ B80 on New Year's Eve. It'll be starting at 8 o'clock. It'll be me, Farley, Tom, and Rosie, and we'll be performing an hour before B80. And it's gonna be awesome. Please be please join us on New Year's Eve. Also, we'll be back here in two years e two years. We're taking a break, y'all! Two weeks from tonight, we'll be back here doing all of this again. Obviously different shit, because you don't want to hear the same thing over again, right? Yeah. Keep it original. Is that it? Anyone else got anything else? Go away, Rabbit! I love this guy. I love this guy. Aww. Hey, guys, give it up for Farley for hosting tonight. Woo! It was yeah. nice just sitting in the audience with all of you. That's I'll right. see you guys in two weeks. Awesome. Peace!